Oh, oh, here we're back at the science cave, and the wind was blowing through the uh, the science cave. Must be pretty uh, windy outside. Well, we know that wind, and we've looked, we talked about some wind already. Wind is really due to pressure differences. That's due to pressure differences. I mean, we know that wind travels from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. And we've looked at that quite a bit already. Nothing new I'm, uh, I'm telling you here. But we're going to look at some of the factors right now, of which there are three that really affect uh, wind speed, if you will, or the strength of the wind. And the first one really is the the difference between the high and the low pressure. And this is called the pressure gradient. The pressure gradient. And you can probably assume or stand a reason that the greater the difference between the high pressure and the greater the difference between the low pressure, the higher the wind speed. And that's pretty much true. And uh, you can see that on a map where we've uh, looked at isotherms already on, with isobars. When the isobars are close, we have close isobars. And we're going to be doing some work with this. When isobars are close, high winds, definitely high wind. So if we got isobars, and now yeah, we're going to look at some, but when these isobars running across the map are close together, and if, if you've done topo maps, and we're going to do those too, uh, the closer the, on the topo maps, the, the closer the, uh, you know, the, the train features are, uh, the greater the elevation difference on there. And so this would be very, very steep elevation. Well, the closer the isobars, the, uh, the higher the wind speed. Well, likewise, if the isobars are far apart, isobars far apart, the lower the wind speed. So, you know, we got the isobars and they're far apart, we have lower wind speed low wind or, or not as strong if you want to think of it in those terms. You know, and again, just like contour lines on a topographic map, the farther the contour lines are apart, the terrain does not change as dramatically. Uh, another one which affects wind speed, the second one, is friction. And friction really occurs uh, close to the Earth's surface close to earth. You know, you think uh, close to your surface, what would slow down the wind? Oh, you could have mountains. Uh, you could have trees. Buildings could be in there. You know, anything which is, is going to slow the wind down. Uh, quite often in uh, in farm fields, especially you know, even in Michigan here, uh, if you uh, get a chance, get out there on a oh, take six mile headed west, you'll see these fields, and but then on the west side, you'll see a line of trees. And I am not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. You'll see these trees planted all in a straight line. Oh, you got to remember, Michigan, the prevailing wind is the prevailing southwesterlies. So as this wind blows it hits this tree line and that helps to break the wind or lessen the impact of the wind. You know, then you've got the crop on this side. Uh, quite often the farmhouses, if you see these farmhouses have trees uh, planted around the house itself and again that's to help protect the uh, the house from the strong winds. Because quite often when you got a, uh, oh, when you have, when you're, when you're farming you don't have a whole lot of friction. You know, whether you're uh, corn, 
uh, beans, uh, soybeans, what have you, you know, that wind can go whipping right across. If you've ever been out to the beach and the wind coming off the lake, there's not much to slow it down. The third thing we want to look at, and it's called the Coriolis effect. Coriolis effect. And this is due to the rotation of the Earth. And everything in the northern hemisphere, so the northern hemisphere, hemisphere, northern hemisphere, is diverted to the right. To the right. I should backtrack a little bit here. This is any freely moving object above the Earth's surface. Or actually any freely moving object on the Earth's surface. Uh, this could be the wind. Uh, this could be an ocean current. Uh, this could be lobbing, uh, well, back in the Cold War days, lobbing a missile from the United States the, to the old Soviet Union or the Soviet Union back to the United States. What's his saying? When something is in the air, the Earth is rotating under this object. You know, theoretically, when you jump up, if you got some really serious hang time, you're not going to land in the same spot because the Earth is rotating under you. And uh, we got a demo. We'll take a look at this uh, in class. And I'll probably I'll get a, a video. Uh, I'll get something off YouTube. There's some pretty good ones out there which demonstrate this. And I'll uh, put it after this uh, video on on the lecture series. But what this is saying, if something's flowing from the north, and eh, let's see if we can get a different color here. Let's say a wind's moving from the north, it's going to be shifted to the right. If it's flowing out of the south, whoops, get that back in there. If it's flowing out of the south, it's shifted. Oh, why does that keep going on me like that? If it's flowing to the south, let's see if we can get this back in here. It's going to shift to the right. And if it's flowing from the east, it's going to get shifted to the right. And if it's flowing from the west, it's going to get shifted to the right. And this is really, here we have our prevailing southwesterlies right in here. And we're going to take a, take a look at this a little bit more as we move along. But suffice it to say, in the northern hemisphere, everything's diverted to the right. So if it's coming out of the north, it's shifted to the right. So this is actually the polar northeasterlies. Here we've got the north. Here we got the uh, the trade winds. We got the the winds coming out of the east are shifted to the right, and these are shifted to the right, and these are also shifted to the right. And we'll take a uh, we'll look at this in a little more detail. Uh, in class here, so this is uh this is it for the uh, the wind here, and uh, we will catch you later.